Well, it's Tuesday Wrestling, and you all know what that means. That means we get to review NWA. As you know, they continue with more of their showcasing clips from the World is a Vampire tour with Billy Corgan and the Smashing Pumpkins. And of course, they're showing more stuff coming from the three-week tour in Australia. And then, of course, we got the second week of NXT Gold Rush. We have the NXT Women's title, the NXT Tag Team titles, and the NXT title on the line, and other special matches. And of course, we cap it up with some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. Such as, of course, a little um, situation that took place during Forbidden Door involving Brian Danielson, and plenty other things we're definitely going to be talking about. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay, right here. So welcome to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. So if you guys are new to the channel, pl please click that subscribe button. Or if you like this episode, click like. So now let's get started with our very first review. Our first one is, of course, is NWA with their World is a Vampire Tour. As you know, they did a, a three-week tour in Australia with the Smashing Pumpkins. Of course, the owner of the NWA is William Patrick Corgan, or as we know him, Billy Corgan. So let's get started with the whole thing. Our first match is a no-disqualification match between Thrill Billy Cyrus and Jake Taylor. Now... You know there's going to be a, a lot of things that could be used in this type of match and in no disqualification. There was a belt being used and all that. But of course, the one thing that was very interesting is Thrill Billy low blow Jake Taylor in hopes that that would put him away. But however, that did not stop Jake Taylor no matter what. However, Thrill Billy finally used the Thrill Ride in order to put him away and pick up the one, two, three, adios, Jake Taylor. Now, our next match is a three-way. Now, if you guys remember last time, we had um, Asia versus uh, Natalia Morkova in a singles match. However, that match was ruined thanks with the sudden appearance of Kinsey Page, who feels that she needs to be the center of attention. This is more of the mean girl, Tiffany Stratton, if you guys know what I mean. However, this match turned into a three-way between all of them. But, however... You probably would have thought in the, in your minds that either Natalia Markova would have gone her way with it. However, that does not happen that way. Kenzie apparently used the tight in her advantage to pick up the win. One, two, three. Now our next match, we have Alex Taylor versus a guy from the Southeast Asia named Iman, Iman, Iman es, um, Asman. So the match went pretty well. I think this is more of the junior heavyweight competitor style you would have assumed in this one. But however, this match ended in a no disqualification, all thanks to the current uh, junior heavyweight champion, um, Kerry Morton. However, uh, Caveman Uh shows up out of nowhere and gives a pounding on both men. However, uh, we don't know what's going to happen since then. That's practically what happened after that. So basically, K Man saved his day. <sighs> Excuse me. Now, our next in, um, match is the NWA World Tag Team Titles. Uh, La Rebellion taking on the Natural Classics. I uh, have seen these guys before in a pre in a uh, Australian promotion. I don't, I don't remember which one. I know I reviewed that. But that match was unbelievably good. I, I practically enjoyed every last bit of it. Um, however, it took a lot of combinations with uh, Rabelion to put the natural classes away, but it was the 450 that put them away once and for all. 
Now, as soon as this match was over, Kerry Morton shows up, uh, trying to put his NWA World um, Junior World Junior Heavyweight title on the line, and of course, the man that he beat up, and man, um, as man shows up, um, I can tell you that match didn't go well for him, so it kind of ended that. So I don't know if we're gonna still be seeing more of the World as a Vampire tour, but we'll find out at uh, the next week. But at this moment, let's move on with our next and final review, NXT Gold Rush. Okay, NXT Gold Rush, this is week two, or as they say, night two, however you want to call it. Our opening match features the NXT Women's title. As you know, they held won the number one contenders in a battle royal match i thought that was pretty good and all that but however of course the sudden appearance of drew gulak and charlie dempsey got in the way now we know they're trying to train their submission moves but because of their interference it cost they held for an opportunity to pick up the win because we did see tiffany strand tap out but apparently because of the distraction they held got uh in the face of the ref but later got pinned but as soon as it was happening, of course, Drew Gulak and and Dempsey got involved in her face saying that she failed. But, you know, this was their fault for costing her the match. Duke Cousin tried to help, but it was the number game. But out of the blue, we saw the return of Professor Chase giving these guys an, a lesson, um, a teachable moment. So now we're going to see what he's going to do. I don't know where he's been, but that's great that he's back. We're all excited. So let's put the U on. Anyway, our next match features the NXT Tag Team Titles. Uh, Malik Blade and Edris Inofe, who won the number one contendership in a three-way match. They faced the current champions, the Gallows Boys, Mark Coffey, and Wolfgang. Now, we know many of us have, have high hopes towards Blade and, and um, Inofe because they are very talented. The match would have gone either way in the favor of Inofe and Blade, but if it wasn't for the a sudden appearance of stacks costing them the match it's still unclear why he got himself involved in this we know that he believes that scalas had something to do with Ch tony d'angelo being in prison but we'll see more about that now um recently we did see of course metaphor they're trying to get themselves back on track ever since he refuses during uh noam dar refuses to talk about of course the loss of the NXT Heritage Cup, but however, Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend are trying to make sure, trying to put the entire women tag team, women's tag team division on notice. Now, keep in mind the NXT Women's Tag Team titles will be defended uh, in a unification match, so that's something I'm sure they're going to be keeping an eye out. We'll see what happens until then. But however, Noam Dar refuses to talk more about the Heritage Cup because. We need to know who will be coming out. Would it be Frazier or Lee? Now, uh, we do see a little segment in the back between Trick Williams and, R and Carmelo Hayes. As you know, they're prepared for this match against Baron Corbin. But however, Real Ripley sent out a message telling them that not to get involved in any of the Judgment Day's business. As you know, they did help out a week ago when Seth Rollins was attacked by Finn Balor. But of course, this past Monday on Raw, we did see hey, uh, Mello in there too. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match is the NXT Heritage Cup. Dragon Lee versus Nathan Frazier. Uh, of course, Ulyssa Leone and Frost were the seconds. I have to say, this was a pretty good darn match. I was impressed by it because I felt like their storyline is saying, oh, you know, um, no one Dar was... He may be the guy who kept the Heritage Cup, but they, but I feel that Nathan Frazier and Dragon Lee made this one more exciting than it ever was. But however, um, it was Frazier who picked up the, pit, the win on third round, then Lee in the fifth, and then finally our last and final round, Frazier. I thought it was amazing. I have to say the Heritage Cup with Nate Frazier and Lee was the most impressive match I've ever watched, especially if you're playing more of the hard, like more of the technical aspect rules, but. Who am I saying? Now, as you know, next week we're going to have the NXT Underground that it was stipulated by none other than Damien, uh, Damien Kemp. 
However, uh, Eddie Thorpe, who decided to build a camp because he knows that he is not facing any slouch. But Gable Stevens volunteered to be his trainer. So basically, many of his training techniques are helping him uh, to overcome it. So hopefully he's well prepared for next week. So keep that in mind. Now, as you know what happened last time, Wesley is not completely so adamant after what happened, you know, where he won the title in a way that he felt that maybe it wasn't fair for Tyler Bates' benefit, that sort of thing. But of course, uh, Wesley decided to leave both Frazier and, um, no, no, um, Ali and, of course, what's his name, Bate, getting each other's faces, that sort of thing. But yeah, so we'll see what happens until then. We do see a little segment with Von Wagner and Robert Stone now. If you guys remember last week, Von Wagner talked a little bit about his past. Um, seems like it's getting a little too much for him, but I'm sure Mr. Stone will figure something out. So we'll get to that at some other point. Our next match, we have Kiana James versus Gigi Dolan. Now, D Gigi had dealt with, um, with Kiana James in the past. I have to say it was a, a good, decent match, but it took Gigi Dolan with the um crucifix bomb to put her away however kiana james who has been the sore loser of this whole thing was not a percent happy with this so she attacked her with her purse that carried a cans of paint so she poured it all over Gigi dolan so basically she made things a lot more weirder so we'll see what happens till then now as you know we've been seeing that uh, Stax is believing that the Gallows boys had something to do with, of course, with Tony D'Angelo being arrested. But however, uh, what was his name? Joe Coffey personally went to see, of course, Tony D'Angelo and decided to tell him that he had nothing to do with what he thought happened. So he told him that it was Stax. He didn't believe him at first, but until he played the recording from last week, that's when the whole truth came out. It was revealed that Stax was the real rat so it looks more like he's making moves now that the don was in prison so the obvious thing is now what is Don, um tony d'angelo gonna do now so will he escape or will he find a way to get out of this we'll we'll see about that uh, all right uh as you know they can if you guys may have saw what happened roxanne perez was attacked by blair dan report when she was doing her little questionnaire online However, she was okay. It was now been foretold they will face each other at the Great American Bash. So that's going to be great. Next up, we do see Jay-Z Jane who is complaining and bitching about certain things, especially with Lyra Valkyria. But once again, Valkyria decided to kick her ass and leave her there. However, Rhea Ripley took a extreme laughingness seeing that she likes Lyra Valkyria's style. So basically, that is like, okay, so... <laughs> So we'll see what happens then. Now, we did see earlier the schism have a little meeting about what's been going on. However, it appears that Joe Gazy decided to take this a little extreme. He decided to put, of course, um, in a very interesting situation, the Dyad will be facing against the Creed Brothers and the loser leaves NXT forever. That is a bit more like, okay, I know that Julius the, uh, agreed to it. Uh, what's her name? Um, Ivy Nile and, of course, Brutus are like not sure if that's <sighs> the right move. But, um, of course, Dyad did not like it either. So they even complained about this with Ava. So we'll see what happens till then. Now, our main event is the NXT Championship. Uh, Baron Corbin, who's making his return, now he actually gets a chance to take the NXT top button. Mello, he refuses to quit. He refuses to stay down. You know it's going to take a lot more than try to put him away. And luckily, he did that. Uh, he did that. Um, I had to say Mello took a lot of beating, but it was nothing but net in the end that put away, um, what's his name? Uh, but uh, put away Baron Corbin, and I think this is amazing. But however, at the end of the event, we saw a little screaming of Braun Breaker. We don't know what's it about, but he said he had something in store. 
for next week. So we'll see what happens until then. So I'll just uh, leave it right here and move on with our last thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So this is what we have. Now, you may have heard right now recently about Brian Danielson. He broke in his arm in the last 10 minutes before the match was over. Now, some of you may saw the x-ray of that. It doesn't seem look good. It appears that he will be out of action to six to eight weeks. Um, hopefully, he does recover in time, but... Um, there was no other details exactly what else is going to be for the treatment, but I'm sure uh, he'll get that figured out. So we'll see about that. Pro Japanese promotion Pro Wrestling Bazaar has announced for their upcoming event on the 23rd of July at Corken Hall. Uh, New Japan star and member of the House of Torture show will be making his appearance being in a match against the founder of Pro Wrestling Bazaar, um, Aizami Kodaka. Now, I um, don't know if these two ever met before, but yes, so that's what's going to happen. Um, MLW has announced for an upcoming debut that will take place at Philly on J July 8th. Tiara James will be making her debut. If you guys never seen her, uh, Tiara James teamed up with Kylie Ray to take on Mina Shirakawa and Waka when they were still members of the Cosmic Angels. It was during that one uh, show in New York City last year in October. This was prior before Mina actually got um, injured in the face. But Tiara was there. She was um, Kylie Ray's uh, partner. So Now, on that very same day, on July 8th, it was also announced for the upcoming an upcoming match. Uh, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams takes on timothy thatcher that's gonna be one ball breaking match now as you guys know we saw hiromu takahashi made his appearance in aew at the zero hour however it appears that he uh, he wants to put his in iwgp junior heavyweight t uh, title on the line against wrestlers such as jungle boy or darby allen or whoever from aew so the obvious question will any of them step up we'll see about that now, uh, West Coast Pro has announced for two different things. The first one is the West Coast Cup on the 10th and 11th of August. Uh, Starboy Charlie makes his uh, appearance, so uh, we're probably looking forward to that, to, to that. But however, for the West Coast 5, which is the anniversary show on the 14th of October, uh, Masada Tanaka, Masato Tanaka will be making his debut in this show. It's like pretty great. Now, finally, for our last update, we have Pro Wrestling Noah. As you know, we have the N1 victory taking place real soon. Uh, they announced for the schedule for this particular day. Um, let's see, let me pull it up real quick. Ah, here it is. Uh, as you know, it starts on um, August 6th at the Yokohama Budokan. And then, of course, August 9th through the 11th, they will be in Cork and Hall. And of course, uh, they'll be in Sapporo on August 8, 19th and the 20th. And then after that, they'll be heading to Sendai's Pit and then Kawasaki. And then for the final uh, on September 3rd, um, Osaka, Japan. So that's going to be interesting for us to hear about. Uh, and also one more thing uh, is now official. Um, Julia will be getting a title shot for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship between Will Nangel. Uh, however, sh they both will participate in the two-night event at New Japan Strong in Cork and Hall on July 4th and July 5th. Um, on July 4th, Will and Nangel will team up with Momo Kogo to take on Julia and Tekla. But however, the following day, um, Will and Nangel will be in a singles action against Julia. So that is something we're probably going to be looking forward to. It. So I think that's Pretty much it, what we have, I think it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. We do have AEW Dynamite. We probably will be dealing the aftermath or the fallout 
after Forbidden Door. So we're going to see what else is going to happen. Uh, haven't decided if there's any other shows I want to do before that. But we'll see what happens uh, till then. Um, as a friendly reminder, I will be doing my podcast a little more earlier. Now, if you guys don't have me on on uh, on on podcast you can find me on spotify i'll leave the name of this right here right in the bottom right here and the screen is uh dwz podcast with j-rod so you may find me on spotify if you guys are interested and i think that's pretty much it for now so as this moment i will see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you adieu so Goodbye, and have a nice day.